What is up guys, Sink here, and yes, we're on the Star Trek Fleet Command, and I thought I'd do a little beginner's hints and tips guide to help out people that are just starting to play the game, and maybe some people that are already playing it, to tell them some things they may not have known. First up, if you've just started the game, let me tell you straight off, it is not a rush to level. It's not like other games where you want to get max level as quick as possible. If you do that, you're going to find yourself getting way overpowered by mobs, which if you actually took your time, you'd easily be able to kill. So yeah, do not race to try and get to max level, because ultimately that is going to be your downfall. You won't even get past like level 12. Right, next up. The most important thing you need to do is make sure you keep up with your research. Research increases not only... Let's just get up to it. Not only increases things like uh, your defensive, like your shields, you also need it to unlock new ships. So as you can see there, the Orion Corvette, uh, the uh, Pindra, um, and also the Turas. You know, it's all the different ships. So you need to make sure you keep on top of your research. Now also, as you can see here, things like uh, shield efficiency, reinforced bulkheads, it makes your ship stronger. So that's also very important good thing about this is also actually affects your station so you've got things like repair diagnostics uh, increase the repair speed for all ships so that's really important because when my main ship gets destroyed my um, what ship am I using I can't remember but when that gets destroyed that takes about 30 to 40 minutes for it to repair and it's kind of annoying when you just want to play so it's really important to make sure that you actually do keep up with your research as soon as your research is done go straight back into your research and see if there's anything with the, the plus green arrow that means that you can actually research it there and then so yeah that's the research section next up is also another important thing keep your materials as high as possible now nobody can actually attack your station which is where your materials are stored until you reach level 15 now I'm actually only level 13 so I'm fine nobody can attack me right now so store up as much as you can as early as possible obviously you're going to be using it for building uh, for upgrading your ships uh, for repairs etc etc so it doesn't matter if you actually use it just try and stock up as much as you can as early as possible now talking about being attacked as soon as you actually reach level 10 as I say I'm 13 as soon as you reach level 10 your ships are able to be attacked by other players when you're out and about in the solar system so or galaxies should I say so make sure that if you are level 10 if you're gonna go offline make sure you bring your main ship home if you want to leave your mining ship out because it does take quite some time to mine do so because they actually repair a lot quicker and the expenses isn't that much if they do get destroyed and chances are they won't get any of your cargo especially at the low level not so sure about high level, as I say, not there yet. But yeah, make sure you bring your ships home if you're going offline. Just leave your mining ship out mining. Right, next up, oh actually I've already discussed the level 15 thing. Right, so your ship upgrades. Let's get into these. Now I've actually discussed this already on a previous video about upgrading your ship, but um, the main thing is to keep your ship upgraded as much as possible. Now as you can see I've got one more item to put in there and I need some uh, common refined gas which I've got away about three more hours before I can do another load of that and also need to get some tritanium as well but that's easily enough. I'll show you that in a second why I say that's easily enough. So make sure you keep your ship upgrade. Now as soon as I get to tear this up I've got another five levels to go and then tear it up again by equipping everything so try and keep your ship as highly equipped as possible so if anybody does come and attack you who is near your level you stand a better chance of beating them next shouldn't have gone out of that let's go back into it we're going to be talking about the officers in your crew now this is kind of very important to make sure you've got the correct type of officers for your correct type of ship now I'm going to quickly just show you the officers I'm actually using on my ships at the moment. So um, on this one, uh, which which ship is which ship am I on right now? Okay, this is the Turas. So this is basically a ship that does damage. Um, let's go back into it. I forgot what ship I was on for a second. Then. 
Right, so, the main crew, as you can see, uh, attack, defense, health, shows you the main stats for the actual um, crew member. Now, it's, if you click on it, it says knowledgeable. Uh, Instructor Spock increases the weapon damage of the ship by 5%, so automatically you know um, that he's an attacker. And uh, Instructor Spock increases the shield deflection, armor, and dodge of the ship by 12%. So, yeah. Go over to this guy. Big shot. Cadet Sulu increases the damage of the first shot by the ship by 25% for the first round. So, again. Now you may notice with the uh, with these officers right now, there's this uh, electric lightning bolt there, and these have joined up. So say if I put I don't know, um, let's see one that's not on the ship. If I put this guy in there, as you can see, the bonus is reduced, namely because he hasn't got the lightning bolt and like the gold circle round uh, the gold round it. Because when these link up, um, it shows that they actually can work better together. Now, Cadet Uhura, I'm going to put you in there because I don't think I had you in. Did I? Yeah, I had you in there before. So now you see the 10% lines increase. So it's increased the actual um, bridge crew strength. Now, your crew members down here, um, depending on what type of ship, um, th these are like the same. It's like the modification energy absorbers to help the ship survive longer in a battle. But if we go over to a, oh, go over to our, our other ship, our mining ship, which is the ECS uh, Fortunate, the crew members are a lot different. Now again, with the bridge crew, you need to make sure they're lined up to get the extra percentage. But here, in the bottom row, these are just crew members. Now if you actually look at the crew members, it's a dilithium miner. Now this increases the ship mining rate of dilithium by 20%. That's just for dilithium, however. So it doesn't work for tritanium or any other type of ore you may find. So Tritanium there, and this one is fell steel, uh, past steel, sorry. Yeah, so I've got an increase of each type of ore in there. Now, I am going to get rid of her eventually when I can find any officer, if there is one out there, to increase um, the mining speed for, say, um, the gases or the crystals. Then I'll replace her up, because I'm, I'm not really mining uh, past steel. It's not something I really need. So yeah, make sure you've got the correct type of crew members and bridge crew on your ship to make sure that your ship is as efficient as possible. Always ch check the crew members out, and if you do have anything that says mining on, make sure you put it on, your, well, surveying ship, sorry, not mining ship. Surveying ship, got to get the terminology right. Next up is missions. Don't try pushing too fast forward into areas that are too high above you. Make sure you keep on top of missions that are in the solar system around you and work through them. Now, if you find yourself running out of missions, head to other planets that are nearby of the same sort of level, maybe a slightly bit higher than yourself, and if you see missions there, then pick them up. Now, you will find planets with a grade exclamation mark, which will not provide any missions. I don't know how that works. I'm not sure if it's a level requirement or whether you haven't completed a certain series of missions in there. But yeah, if you've got the missions, make sure you keep up to date with them. And if you see any that you can collect, just collect them. Even if you can't complete them because they're too high for you, just collect them because eventually you'll be able to do it. Next up, generators and collector, uh, collections. Which are these down here? Now, as you can see, my pass still is not actually giving me anything to click on, unlike these ones where I can click stuff. Namely because I'm above the cap, which is 46,200, which is basically the storage unit here. That's the max that the warehouse can hold. So if I was level 15 and I was to get attacked, I'd lose um, that remaining amount. So I'd only keep 46,000. But because over here, I can actually store more than that. I can store 10,000 Tritanium. Let's get out of this. Because I can store 10,000 Tritanium. Uh, yeah. Um, I've only got 1,929. So these are actually generating materials for me. So now the greyness there is actually it filling up. So just think of it as a filling glass of water. So you know when you need to collect it. Make sure you check on them regularly. Because um, these are like uh, level 12. So if I click on these... That's 579 part, uh, Tritanium, 579, then you got Dilithium, this isn't really that much, there's not as much in that, 
but you know it all helps because it's free especially if both of your ships get destroyed and you've got none there you just go to there collect them and there you go you've in instantly got your repair um, tritanium there right um, next up is repairing after battle so if you're taking your ship into battle and I don't know whether you're farming people uh, to you know get parts as soon as you can find yourself getting down halfway, I would recommend going to go and repair. Because all it takes is one ship to just knock off the rest of that half. And you're going to have a long ass waiting time to actually get your ship out of the repair and back in again. So make sure you repair regularly and don't let yourself, um, for your HP, get too low. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself being bored with nothing to do. Next up, uh, ship battle rotation. Now, ship battle rotation, I'm going to show you what I mean, but I'm not going to show you where I am because then you'll know where I am. And I don't want people to come in farming me. <laughs> right, so I've just gone into a random system just so I can quickly show you. Now, if I click on any of these NPCs here, now it actually shows an up arrow there with a red arrow down on me, which means... Theoretically, if we're kind of the same level, he would probably outmatch me. Obviously, it won't this one because I outpower him quite a fair bit. But you need to know about the rotation of about what you're fighting. So, as you can see, I'm actually using an explorer right now, and that was a battleship. Now, battleships tend to overpower explorers. Explorers overpower interceptors, and interceptors overpower battleships. So, if you've got a mission where you know you need to go into an area where you need to take out so many level say eight and you're only like level six swap out your ship to make sure that your ships can overpower now you won't see um the surveying ships in this rotation because they're only designed for mining not for fighting so you're not going to see it in that in there so if you're thinking well what about mining uh, the surveying ships what can they overpower it's uh, a bit of luck of the drawer on that one i will say it is a bit of a luck on the drawer of that one but yeah so let's get back to my base right okay now we're back in my base um where's my ship going okay my ship's off somewhere i do not know where he's going he's going somewhere but he, he's just going for a little trip around the, the solar system right so next up is your daily missions that you have now if you click on your missions down there so you see your missions you've got your daily goals now i can't actually show them because i've actually done them all uh, but you're going to have a list of daily goals that are appropriate for your level. So don't think that, you know, some of them you're not going to be able to do. You are going to be able to do every single one of them. Now, as you get a certain amount of points, say on like uh, 25, 50, 100, 150, I think. And each time you unlock them, you get a reward for doing the mission. But also you get to open up a crate, which can have some useful stuff in, uh, whether it's, um, you know, like mining or like titanium or past steel or whatever there's always something useful in there for you so it's really important you do that because sometimes you can actually get a nice amount of platinum out of there as well so that's uh, something you should always think about doing um along with that saying that also make sure that you actually collect your chests now at low level you won't have the 24 hour chest this one um and at the very beginning i don't think you start with a four hour chest you'll start with a 10 minute chest now these 10 minute chests do not stack so if you do not collect it uh the time won't reset until you've collected it um but yeah if you're playing constantly just like right there three latinum now you have to pay for latinum to get latinum in game so straight up that's a perfect example okay it's not much but a perfect example of why you should be collecting your crates every 10 minutes plus 50 officer XP and then when you get the four hour chest I won't I won't lie you don't always get decent stuff in here sometimes it's a load of crap let's have a look right so that's actually not too bad a uh, build speed up of 15 minutes times one and a t uh, five recruit token now you need 20 recruit tokens to unlock the basic ones and they go up and up and up so yeah Always make sure that you're opening your 10 minute crate, your 4 hour crate, and when you do get it, 24 hour chest. Now, in uh, in England, the time right now, uh, the time that the dailies reset is 4 a.m. Uh, so the 24 hour chests and the 4 hour chest are some of the requirements for your daily objectives, the ones that I just showed you. So um, 
if you know what time the server resets in your country, make sure that you hold on to them um, uh, for the, the 24 hour chest because you're going to need it for that. Right, what else was there? Um, and also, the final thing was uh, somebody asked me on my video that I uploaded yesterday or the day before trying to find your friends on the game. Now, if you've got a friend in real life that plays this game and you actually want to play together, join the same alliance so you know you can play together. You can't actually tell at the moment what servers you're on. Um, so what I suggested to him is just going to a system, putting yourself around a planet, and both of you meet up around that planet. Now, if both of you say that you're there and you can't see your friend, that means he's on a different server. Now, I'm going to show you right now. When it loads up. About playing with your friends. Uh, come on, questions. Uh... Is your friend on a different server? Now it clearly says on here, if you and your friend decide to play to get, uh, the game together but cannot seem to find uh, one another or join the same alliance, chances are you're on a different server. The ability to switch servers is something we're actively working on, so don't despair. Keep playing, um, leveling up, and eventually, I mean, this game's been out, what, I think I think it came out in November. I've, I've been playing for about five days. I've not even been playing a week yet. So there is stuff in this game I don't know, but I do know that uh, one of my friends at work started playing this because we play this at work with it, uh, work at the same time, and I play this a lot at work because I work nights and it's boring. But yeah, so we actually wanted to play together, and um, I went to go and meet him in his home base, well, outside his home base. Unfortunately, he wasn't there. We found out that we weren't on the same servers, but when they do introduce it, you'll be able to just transfer servers over there. Um, well, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to transfer servers with all your stuff. I think you may need to switch server and start fresh. That's what a lot of these games tend to do. Because I say this namely because games that I've played before, like Galaxy Legend, I was actually quite well known on that. And um, I wanted to transfer my character onto a new server. Uh, but they won't allow that because what will happen is people will take, um, you know, if they're quite powerful. You know, they're sort of like the top five on the server but can't get the top place. They'll transfer their character onto a brand new server and just dominate the server. So what I think is going to happen is it, when they do work on the ability to switch servers, if you and your friend want to meet up, you're going to probably have to start afresh and literally start the game from level one, which is kind of annoying. I know but that's something you may need to have to do. Now, I think that's covered everything that I need to explain. If there's anything that you do need to know, leave it in the comments section. I do read all the comments. I answer any questions that I can answer. And as I've always said, if I don't know the answer, I'll fucking find it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like if you found this helpful. And I'll catch you guys later. Toodles!